Hello, and welcome to an episode of ES Repair. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. In this video, we're going to be talking about triode for alternating current, also known as a triac. And they're very simple to use, and they're very simple to test. So, let's get started. Here we have the triode for alternating current. Triac for short. Triacs are solid state components that can conduct alternating current. Now you may know these as bidirectional triode thiesters or bilateral triode thiesters, but nowadays they're mostly called triacs. Now they are similar to SCRs, except triacs can have current flowing in either direction and its gate can be positive or negative in respect to main terminal 1 or MT1. You will find these used in low speed induction motors, lamp dimmers, AC heating resistors, and household appliances such as the microwave. Microwaves do in some cases will use a triac to turn the high voltage transformer on to cook the food. Now these are used often in phase angle controls in alternating current. And what this is, is the ability to turn on the, tri the triac at s different points in the cycle. For instance, if the triac was turned on during the rise of the voltage and current cycle, then the device will have more power if the triac was turned on during the, the, the fall of the voltage and current back to zero, then the device connected to the triac would have left less power. This is what they mean by phase angle control. Now the triac's triggering mode is divided into four quadrants, one, two, three, and four. But I'll explain that a little later. Next we have the triode for alternating current. This is the equivalent to a standard triac using just ACRs. As you can see here, all you're doing is having the polarity of the SCR in two different directions with the common gate connected. Now this equivalent circuit will work in quadrant two and quadrant four. And this circuit can be used to control high inductive loads. Now, next we have the quadrants. The quadrants, as you see here, is the regions that the triac will function. For instance, in quadrant one, the gate can be negative if the MT1 is negative and the MT2 is positive. This is operating the triac in quadrant one. In quadrant two, you have the uh, MT2's positive, the gate's positive, and MT1 is negative. This is quadrant two. These are showing the different phases or quadrants that the, tr the transistor can work with the trigger. Now, quadrant four is seldom used because in trigger mode, the, th the triacs have low sensitivity in quadrant four. Now, not all triacs will even operate in the quadrant because of the way it, it because it's less sensitive. Most of the time they operate either in quadrant one, two, or three. Now you will find in some cases, like the, the thiester I'm going to test today in this video, is a what's known as a quadrant three thiester. This is because the uh, thiester only works in quadrants one, two, and three, and does not work in quadrant four. Now, you won't find these a whole lot, but in some cases you will find them called quadrant three thiesters. 
and this is what they're referring to. So let me get started and show you how you could test these. Here we have the demonstration for a triac. Now triac is basically the same thing as an SCR. The only difference is an SCR only handles direct current, which means that the current only flows in one direction. As for triacs, the direct, the, it can handle alternating current. Now I've got my AC transformer power here going to the board. The power goes through the light and then back through the black wire back to my transistor and then back to the transformer. Now the triacs are the same as the SCRs in respect to the to their on state. Now when the as you can see here now I got power plugged in. The transistor should be in the off state by default. You must apply a, a positive or negative current to or voltage to the transistor, as I will do here. Now, notice that now that I'm applying current to the gate, now my light comes on. Now, because of the nature of alternating current, the triac will not stay on due to the fact that the, after the end of the half cycle, the voltage in the current goes down to zero. This causes the transistor to turn off. Now, as long as the gate is plugged in to the AC power, the transistor will continually conduct. Now, if you use to remove it, the power goes back out. This is because of the nature of the alternating current. Direct current, the current constantly flows, but because of AC alternating current, the current is constantly changing polarities. Well, in order to do it, it has to hit zero. And that's what causes these transistors to turn off. Now, again, if, if you have like that, as long as you apply a current to the transit gate with AC, it doesn't matter which side you give it to. A positive charge can turn it on, a negative charge can turn it on. It all mainly depends on which phase that the current's in, whether it's positive or negative. Now, this is basically how these things work. So keep in mind that SCRs deal with direct current. Once you trigger those on, they will stay on. Triacs can handle alternating current, but they do not stay on. You have to constantly apply power to the gate for them to stay on. Now let me show you how other ways you can test this. Now with uh, triacs, you can test it in the same way with an ohmmeter. Now, in some cases, now it depends on the triac and it depends on the meter, but not all ohm meters will will work on this. Now, to demonstrate what you could test, to know that these are good, just get your positive and negative leads. You could put the positive lead on the gate, and to put your negative lead on the uh, MT1 now you should read some fa fairly low resistance like you do here not always but in some cases you will now you can also reverse your leads between the gate and the main terminal 1 again you'll see that you'll get some low resistance this is okay now, what, one of the things you want to check for is between the main terminal 1 and the main terminal 2. On here, this is main terminal 1, and the center pin is main terminal 2. You should read very high resistance, at least in the mega ohms. In some cases, it should be pretty infinite. 
But as you can see here, it's it's rare, it's fairly high. It's a, it's over 11 mega ohms. Now you can switch them, as I did here. And you should get still get some very high resistance between the MT1 and the MT2 pins. Now, I do have a broken or a damaged triac, this little one right here. And it is damaged. Now, one of the things you're going to look for when you're testing these ohms is check for shorts. This is MT1. Now, now, notice how the reading is going down to zero. This is because the transistor is no longer good. This came out of a touch lamp. You've probably seen one of my videos that I showed you how to repair one. Well, this transistor came out of it. And this was what was causing the thing not to work. This is shorted. But that will give you an idea of what you check for through your resistance. Now, if you want to do diode, you can flip your, own, your digital multimeter to diode check. And you can perform the same functions. And it's a good way to find out if the transistor is good. Now, you can connect it through the MT1 and 2. And you don't get read any volts. That's good. Again, we switch your polarities. Again, you don't read anything on diode check. That's still good. Now, you can check between the MT1 and the gate. Notice that it shows how many volts it requires for the current to conduct through the transistor between the gate and MT1. Now let's check MT2. Notice that there's no measurement. Now, switch your polarities again. Again, notice how it shows that there requires a little voltage to go between the gate and MT1. Now, ch check it with MT2. And again, the, uh, you get no measurements. This is how you would identify using uh, your diode check to check that this transistor is good. Now, back with the one that's damaged, you'll notice what happens here is you get zero volts, which means it's a direct short through this transistor, and this transistor is bad. So, that's how you test triacs. Well, this concludes this video for triax. Now you can use the information I provided for the quadrants 1 through 4 to test your triac. And I hope this video was helpful in the testing your triax. Keep in mind that not all triax operate in quadrant 4 and you'll find some that are called quadrant 3 triax. So when you're replacing these triacs, be sure you replace them with the correct replacement. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.